Hey guys, Gas TV here with another Path of Exile video leading into 3.22 Trial of the Ancestors. And in this one, we're going to talk about the Mage Skeleton. A lot of people love this playstyle, myself included. A couple of things have happened, most notably the Guardian changes, which led us to do some checks and changes and verifications and running the numbers, whether or not the Guardian would be the superior choice or not. And I'm here to tell you that it actually is, despite the horrific approach of these nodes, in my opinion. Uh, a lot of it is to thank the changes to Bastion of Hope for the defensive layers that's making this possible. Uh, I'm going to show you the POB that we have. Obviously, the links in the description to the build guide will be updated when, with everything uh, before the league launches. Um, so first things first, we want to talk about returning projectiles because that's how we made them playable before. And this is not something we'll be using anymore because we you don't really benefit. This is more like a 39% more damage multiplying uh, gem. You could run it if you want to instead of like hyperthermia and whatnot. I'm not a big fan of this personally. I'd rather use hyperthermia, but you could. Because the thing is, this requires your minions to be positioned in a way that the returning projectiles is actually hitting. If they miss, this is a really bad support gym for us. So in the POVs, I'm not using this. Guardian's Blessing is incredibly good. I think that it's going to be a nuisance to run this on something like a Holy Relic. And therefore, we'll use it on the Anime Guardian. And since the Anime Guardian is going to require you to run Mask of the Stitch Demon, more of this in detail in the written guide, we are not going to use this in the low budget version. So, that said, we're going to check out the PUB. In the PUB, in the low budget end, we're running about 1.6 million Shaper DPS with everything included. The changes that we've done have been very straightforward, very simple. We've invested into these three nodes to help with block. We're not capped on uh, attack block in this version, a little lower than I would personally want. However, the build itself is going to perform. All right-ish. I think that Mage Skeletons uh, used to be so much better. Obviously, they've lost quite a lot of damage. However, they will definitely be a really good build to play. I had a lot of fun League starting with that in 3.21, despite it not being a meta build, such as the Poison SRS or Sumancer, for example. But the Ascendancy nodes were going time in need. Bastion of Hope, obviously, for the defenses. And then our minion nodes. Uh, I have a video about this. You can check that out on my channel, talking about the Guardian changes. Um... If you click the party button here, these have the auras that we are assuming are level 20. And these are sorted through the party system right now, since the gems are not in the actual, the ascendancy powers are not actually in the PUBs right now. So that's how we are um, going to uh, add these to the PUB by um, custom modifiers. So in the low budget end, expect about 1.6 million shaper DPS. We're running things with the Flesh Crafter uh, for this build. And I would probably recommend playing with something like. Um, Without this and having curses like Elemental Weakness instead before you get Flesh Crafter or running on a tab, that would be fine. Keep in mind that a 5-link Flesh Crafter would be out outperforming a 6-link Tabula. So you keep that in mind. Uh, the build guide is covering everything in detail. Like I mentioned, some of the changes that we've done uh, includes um, um, the uh, Flesh Offering on the low budget instead of Bone Offering since we're now a Guardian instead of a Necromancer would be the biggest change where you have the approach of not requiring any white sockets on the low budget. So we are still going to use Pierce consistently, but change either Volley or GMP for hyperthermia or the returning projectiles if you like to keep, and keep in mind the positioning of your minions. This DPS is obviously without Vol Skeletons uh, in play. When you pop those out, you'll have a significant higher damage output. Like, it's crazy how much damage they do. So my DPS for the PUB is not inflated by Vol Skills. So this is showing you the efficiency your build will have without the Volskill active. So that's the low budget version. The medium budget is uh, obviously a little bit better. We ended up at about seven something million Shaper DPS. Um, I believe, let me double check. Yeah, about seven million. This one is using a Surrender. You can use a Rare Shield instead. Again, running Flesh Crafter. In here, we are going to use a, an Unset Ring for Flame Dash because we need to attack, which means we're going to need to use our Shield Charge so that we can enable Bastion of Hope for the defensive layers. We're also using a Divine Blessing in the PUB right now, which will be a Guardian's Blessing later. And in here, we're going to run Haste. And the way the DPS, uh, we are sustaining this is to linking this um, outside. So essentially, this is going to be a three link, one socket, where we are separating Ray Spectres away from the links, so that our Divine Blessing was, is going to hit our Animate Guardian. In the AG section here, I only have three items in the current state of this. Obviously, all of this will be fine-tuned before the league launches, and all of these PUBs will be available in the written guides linked in the descriptions below. We're going to run a Kingmaker, obviously. Basket of Stitch Demon is how we're going to sustain the 14.3% life degen that they're going to get from the Auras. And we're going to mitigate this with Doppelganger, because percent physical damage mitigation works. Armor does not for physical damage dots. So we're going to use this to mitigate the damage. 
we're going to end up taking about 5,000 life per second on the Animate Guardian, whilst the Animate Guardian is going to regen around the ballpark of 25 to 30,000 life per second to mitigate this so you can have a permanent haste aura through the Guardian's Blessing support. And that's basically the changes on the uh, low uh, medium budget. Our Punishment Curse that we used to run is now a Sniper's Mark. And again, the Shield Charge is going to be needed to be run with this build. We have that, and our Unset Ring is then the Flame Dash to get over uh, obstacles or gaps in the maps you're playing. When it comes to the higher budget version, it is a very expensive version. We end up around 30, 32 million Shaper DPS. This will require two white sockets on your Flesh Crafter to make room for the Pierce and GMP for clearing. So do keep in mind that you'll then be switching your crit damage and your Predator support for two green sockets. You can play around with that all you want, but in a high budget version, expecting you to get a uh, Betrayal Service to get yourself the uh, white sockets isn't a big deal in my opinion, because the rest of the items on this build is very expensive. So expecting two white sockets on this is not a big deal. Uh, we're running Spirit Offering on the higher budget rather than Flesh Offering. It comes out on top. We are again making sure that we are running a Shield Charge, which is why we have an Onset Ring for Flame Dash. And we're running, again, Divine Blessing is supposed to be Guardian's Blessing. It's level 18 because of the 32% increased effect for the Haste Aura. Again, splitting this up to be a three link, one socket for the splitting out the race spectres. We have this exclusively on our Animate Guardian, which again is running the style of Kingmaker, Mask of Stage Team, and Doppelganger setup. Again, all of these will be fine-tuned when the guides are updated in the written guides. But that basically sums up the approach of May Skeletons leading into 3.22. I think that if I were to tier list these, I'd put them on an A+, plus, sorry, A- minus or a B+. Plus. They are not as good as they used to be. They're still performing rather well. They're fun to play, which is the big, uh, big pro to them. Uh, but I think that the performance is a bit lackluster. And do keep in mind that the DPS is, um, I wouldn't say inflated, but you got to keep in mind that for the elemental relic to actually take place, again, in the party section here, uh, you need to hit enemies for one second optimally, but around one and a half seconds to have all three relics being in motion. And this is going to be easy to trigger because there are a vast amount of minions hitting enemies, but there's a 0 0.3 second cooldown on this. So about one and a half second, and you'll have all your auras out. The other part of this is that our Spectre choices uh, because of this approach, is no longer charges. We are running an Arena Master and a Pale Seraphim, but then we run a Primal Crush Claw and a Primal Rex Matriarch, which are exclusively only buffing Cold and Lightning, and they only do so during a set amount of seconds with a 8-second cooldown, I believe it is, 10-second cooldown. Um, and in the configuration, by having enable buffs enabled in here, should DPS increase this? It's apparently not, for some reason, with a Primal Crush Claw. If I put this to the Screech, the DPS is still not going up. And if I take this off, this DPS should be higher. So when the DPS debuff from the Primal Crush Claw and Primal Rex is taking place, um, we definitely should be seeing uh, a lot higher damage output from these minions. However, it's still, in my opinion, quite a lot of currency invested for the damage that you receive. You can make this even better by investing more. But that kind of sums up my opinion on the main skeleton leading into 3.22. It is a solid starter, but it will be underperforming compared to things like Poison SRS or Stu Mancher specifically when it comes to the minion builds, even more so when you look at caster builds like Dark Knight. That's about it. Hope you guys enjoyed this little recap of this build leading into 3.22. Hit the like button, subscribe for more con content, and leave a comment down below what you guys think of it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Till then, stay safe, keep rocking.